video we'll go through what an induction is and why you may end up having one. So labour is going to begin when your baby releases the hormone oxytocin which triggers your uterus to start to contract. If this doesn't happen naturally then an induction is done to artificially stimulate your body to make labour start. Now before you consider a medical induction there are some natural methods that you can try that might encourage your body to go into labour naturally including acupuncture, homeopathy, nipple stimulation or having sex, osteopathy, chiropractic, massage or reflexology. As well you'll want to address and work through any fears or anxieties you may have about labour, childbirth or parenting that might be creating a psychological block around childbirth. Now there are also medical reasons for having an induction. You're past your due date, your baby is not thriving or growing, you have preeclampsia. This is a condition that develops in pregnant women characterized by high blood pressure and the presence of proteins in the urine. It's been 12 to 24 hours since your waters broke. Your placenta is deteriorating. Your amniotic fluid is very low. So there's some of the reasons why you might need to have an induction. So let's cover what happens during an induction. A prostaglandin gel is used during an induction and it, can, it contains the prostaglandin hormone that is applied to your cervix to encourage your cervix to start to soften and open up. Now your body may respond immediately to this gel or it can take up to 18 hours for the gel to take effect and initiate labour. So you may be offered a stretch and sweep. So this is when the lower segment of the membranes of your amniotic sac are manually separated from the uterus. And the aim is to activate the prostaglandin hormone in your cervix to help soften and ripen the cervix and trigger contractions. So this procedure is usually done during an internal vaginal examination. Your waters may also be broken. Breaking your waters is when the sac that's holding your baby and the amniotic fluid is punctured and a thin medical instrument with a hook is inserted into your vagina through your open cervix and it's used to break the membranes. You'll be given syntocin. Now syntocin is a synthetic hormone that makes the uterus contract. It's an artificial form of oxytocin and it's administered by an intravenous drip and this process can make your contractions very intense and difficult to handle. Now an induction or augmentation, which we'll go through an augmentation shortly, requires continuous fetal monitoring. And this is going to prevent you from being mobile and active during labor. Instead, you'll have to lie on your back to give birth. Once you're on a drip, you no longer generate all the natural hormones to help you with natural pain management and you may need pain relief. Your baby will also have to be monitored because induction is not a natural process and there is a higher likelihood of complications arising. Now an augmentation, otherwise known as accelerating labour, is performed if your labour has started naturally but your contractions are not increasing in intensity. Augmentation or accelerating labour can be done in two ways. So the first way is manually breaking your waters to help accelerate the labour. And the second way is syntocin is administered through an intravenous drip to speed up the labour. So I encourage you to research and learn more about inductions and the different interventions that are offered so that you can make an informed decision for you and your baby should you be offered an induction or any type of medical intervention during labour.